is a story. Hi everyone, Happy New Year. Here we are, January 2017. Lots of changes, lots of evolutions. So this is the deal. In 2016, I got the vision, the picture, the reality, uh, the sense that the demographics were breaking off, splitting off. However, it's become very clear in the last six weeks that I was, I'm picking up on something that's happening in the future. It's not quite happened yet, but what has happened is that the demographics, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, all the signs, these demographics that are on these evol evolutionary narratives, they're unfolding spiraled evolutionary stories in particular themes. I do believe, I feel, I sense that they've split. And so what I'm going to be doing, and this is going to be more work, so I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing this, but what I've started to do for 2017, January, is for each demographic, I am doing two readings. So there's a split happening. There are cert There's a certain populace of people. There's a certain... Mm, evolutionary story that's unfolding for let's say half or at least a quantity maybe even a third a quantity of Aries and then there's another storyline unfolding for another populace another segment of the Aries demographic it's the same for Taurus etc so let's get started on the year I'll explain it as we go through um, the reading this month. Everyone, so there's a lot to talk about as we complete 2016 and we enter into 2017. So of course this is our January 2017 alchemy scope, right? This series of alchemy scopes for this new beginning of a new cycle and indeed it is so let's start with talking about the numerology 2016 was a nine year it was a hard year for many many people out there it was a very tough year on the collective scale it was a very tough year in fact this nine year of 2016 was about endings completion it was about old patterns coming up to the surface for healing, for seeing. So as we complete this nine year, we enter into 2017, which is a one year. 2017, two, zero, one, and seven together add up to 10. This 10 year adds up one and zero to one. All right. One is initiation. It's individuation it's the individual it's initiative and innovation it is a new beginning one is a new cycle it is literally the new seed so as most of you know who have tuned into my alchemy scopes for ever you know since I've begun or even more recently you realize that these alchemy scopes are always attuned to nat natural cycles so they're always aligned with the new moon portal point and the new moon is a new seeding time indeed everybody 2017 for all of us on the collective scale is representing energetically a new seeding time it's a new moon on a massive scale so we're entering into a new phase of a nine-year cycle so this 2017 year is about new beginnings so this is fantastic. And I have to tell you, everything that I'm going to bring up now is aligning with this message of 2017. Ironically, on this new moon point where we are officially kind of beginning, this is post winter solstice in the northern hemisphere and entering into this new cycle for the year. I'm recording this, of course, before this Capricorn 
new moon right before January 2017 begins. This new moon point, this Capricorn new moon, is the third of the last three months of a seven degree new moon point. Scorpio had a seven degree new moon, Sagittarius had a seven degree new moon, and Capricorn has a seven degree new moon. In fact, to be exact, the new moon that is occurring on the 28th slash 29th of December is at 7 degrees 59 minutes Capricorn. Now everybody, the amazing thing that's aligning with this new moon, this new beginning point that is representing for us the uh, the the beginning of the chapter, the pre-chapter of the calendar year shifting to 2017 is that Uranus goes direct on the same day as our new moon. Now, if that weren't enough, we have the most amazing Sabian symbol, everybody. Listen to this. The Sabian symbol that is imbued at seven degrees Capricorn is this. In a sunlit home, domesticated birds sing joyously. The keynote that Dane Rudyard writes is the wholesome happiness which subservience to the ideals and patterns of a well-established culture brings to those who accept them unreservedly. The wholesome happiness which subservience to the ideals and patterns of a well-established culture brings to those who accept them unreservedly. So let me read on. In various ways, this section of the cyclic process brings to us images glorifying the power and benefits which a steady and well-integrated society brings to its members. Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn was the ruler of the Golden Age before he became a symbol of binding limitations. The person who accepts willingly, or even better, takes for granted the value of these limitations can lead a serene and happy existence, whatever the social status. This stage suggests to us how we can enjoy our life condition by allowing the spiritual values it embodies to fill our consciousness. In every condition provided by a healthy culture, which hardly refers to our present chaotic world, human beings can find enjoyment in the roles they are born to play. Everybody with 2017 equating to the energy of a one year, a new cycle, a new birth, individuation. This is about you becoming you. This is about you as a distinct soul print, a distinct individual stepping into your uniqueness, your distinctness, and doing you. This could not be more aligned with a bigger picture. I mean, it's, it's quite something. So this particular symbology is imbued not only for this particular new moon, but at the point at which Uranus is going direct. And Uranus is the individual. It is our distinct genius self. It's our uniqueness, our distinctness. So there's no accident. There's complete alignment with the fact that Uranus is going direct and that it's happening on this new moon. And this new moon is the third of three sevens. And this particular symbol is the, is the picture. This is birds singing joyously in a sunlit home. This is about emanation. Sun emanates. This home is safety, security. It's the self. It's the body. Everybody, this is this is quite something, you know. Now, let's talk about this new cycle. So, you heard me say in the introduction to this video that I had been getting a call for a long time now, actually. This is since last spring. 
so spring of 2016, I got a really clear picture that, um, that these demographics of the signs are going to start to split, that there's going to be uh, a threading of the story. It's going to fray out because as people step into their individuation, as people understand that they are distinct, as they understand they are a powerful, distinct uh, facet of consciousness, of source, they are going to break. They're going to go into more of their aligned soul print path. And the general demographics for the unfolding is going to shift and change. The thing is, I tend to pick up on things well before they manifest. So when I picked this up in spring 2016, it wasn't necessarily happening yet. What I got clear on in the last six to eight weeks is that there is a split, but it's not threaded out into many different facets of story. So for example, instead of the demographic of Aries continuing on a general evolutionary path of unfolding narrative, it is split, but it's now split in two. So there's a distinct evolution upward and there's another evolution going in another direction. As we move from a stable state into a chaotic state, as people continue to unveil and awaken and really align with their distinct soul print, they will not follow a general narrative. So yes, there is a split now. Is that split going to further break into different threads of story? Yes. At some level in the next couple of years, I don't necessarily foresee these particular readings following any particular um, thick storied narrative. They might. Because again, I see things well in advance, years in advance of sometimes this stuff happening. So it could be that it's five years down the road. But... Maybe it's sooner. It's going to depend on how quickly people wake up and how people really... I think what's happened for me in the last six to eight weeks is I've realized the level at which people are still strongly asleep. And so because that's the case, the, the, the uh, understanding that I've gotten, the clarity that I asked for and that I received was that indeed there is a split but right now, it's only a bifurcation. It's only a split into two. So that's what we're going to proceed with. So let's move forward into the individual signs. And we're going to take a look and see one or two, A or B, left or right. Because I am going to show you two different spreads and two different I Ching narratives, okay? And one of those is going to align more for your story. All right, so let's get started. So I'd like you to meditate on two forms, square and circle, square and circle. Now, if you'd like to align the form square with the number one or with the directional identifier right, you can do that. And I want you to also meditate on the form circle or number two. It can also be B of A and B or left of right and left. But I think the easiest way, because you're my very first recording, you know, I'm doing this, this split spread situation now for the first time. And I really do. It is my very authentic intention to make this easy and smooth as opposed to more complicated. It is absolutely against my deep desires to make any of this complicated. But unfortunately, there, it, there's more information coming through. So I'm going to bring it, at least for now, I'm going to bring it forward. And I will attempt to be as clear and concise as possible. I think that square and circle, tapping into the forms, are going to be the easiest for people. Because it's not about one being better than two. In fact, it's not that at all. 
A being the first letter in the alphabet, B being the second. There's always some hierarchical uh, association that humans do with that stuff. And because I didn't want that, I think that square and circle are going to be best. So tap in. And once you know, once you know what it is, that is your form. So for all of these alchemy scopes coming forward, you are going to be square. You're not going to go back and forth between square and circle. Now, could it be that you, that you kind of switch paths or that you shift trajectory? I, anything's possible. Absolutely anything is possible. But you're not going to flip-flop back and forth every month. If you pick square or if you pick circle... I am doing the readings according to those pathways. Okay? So, let's begin. We're starting with square. So, if you selected square as the resonant form for you, that means that that is your unfolding trajectory at this time. Pisces squares. Okay, let's take a look and see what is the narrative unfolding for you January 2017. So we have the I Ching that came up for you. Two I Ching hexagrams came. The first was number 16, enthusiasm, and it came with changing lines, and it became number 40, deliverance. So number 16, enthusiasm, really does have to do with joy, happiness, giggliness, effervescence. Um, there's a purity to it. There's uh, the energy that's unleashed with enthusiasm. And there's the ability for an enthusiastic nature, something with charisma and kind of optimism and glee that really affects the environment. It affects others. It's contagious. You know, enthusiasm really is contagious. Number 40, deliverance, is about something... It's about clarity happening after a period of darkness. So something gets delivered, essentially, to create a new stability, a new clarity, a new um, identification to help move you forward. So deliverance is land, you know, emerging on the horizon after you've been out at sea for a long time. So for the narrative, the combined story for Pisces squares over the course of the cycle is enthusiasm about maybe the hope for or the identification of light at the end of the tunnel. Now the evolution for you, who you are to embody, who are you to evolve into this month, is number 55, White Buffalo Calf Woman. This really is at the core about forgiveness. It's about assimilating and actualizing and catalyzing peace within yourself. So squares for you, be at peace. Forgive the ones that need your forgiveness because it's time for you to release yourself from that prison of holding the grudge. Okay, so that's your evolution this month. Now, if we go to your spread, we can see, firstly, I'm using the Brawl to Lay, which are the yellow bordered cards here, for all of the square readings, okay? And you can see in the center, we have the Dignity card. Uh, with that is the Two of Wands card reversed. Now I'm using the Druid Craft Tarot here in the middle. Um, so Dignity, Two of Wands reversed. Two of Wands upright is about looking forward and making plans for forward movement, that which you want to make manifest in your life. Reversed is talking about a delay in planning or looking back to the original idea because it's not time to move forward or you feel that it's not time to move forward. But essentially, it's a halt in planning. If we look at the spiritual sector, which is at the far right side, we can see the loneliness card, thankfulness card, journeying, and breaking. So there is something that's activated here that is halting plans. 
There is a sense, perhaps, of loneliness that a lot of you might be feeling over the course of January. I mean, we're st starting a new cycle, but we're still in a very intense time frame. Very, very much so. And we're going to be going through it for the next several years. So all of the processes that we're all going through are to be honored. Honor it. But for some of you, there's going to be a sense of loneliness but also connected, you can see gratitude or thankfulness, journeying and breaking. So it could be that um, what, you, what you used to feel gratitude for on the life journey, you're start, it's starting to break or separate. So again, loneliness and breaking. Breaking does talk about being isolated from the other, being disconnected. So it could be that... The gratitude that you used to have for, for life, for moving forward, is broken. There's a feeling of being broken now. And so thus, there is a lack of planning. You know, and the, with the dignity card in the middle, I have to say, this talks about this is the aligned thing right now. The aligned thing, the thing that is with dignity, with who I am in the moment, is about not planning. Um, down at the base of the reading, you can see the power card. This particular card was um, miscreated at Damanier, so it, it's written in Italian, but uh, Poteri is power. So power at the base. So there are strong influences. You feel a sense. You're having an experience of strong energies, let's say, um, activating you this month. And it's connected to, up at the top, listening and writing. So you are getting inspiration to write, to communicate, to express yourself via, via writing, blogs, videos, cr uh, artworks, uh, dancing, whatever creative projects you're working on. But there is a listening to the expression that wants to come. And it's powerful. So at the base of your month, there's a lot of power coming through you, Pisces, okay? Emotionally, over on the left side, we can see the fortune card. The fortune card has to do with success. It has to do with, um, it can have to do with money. It can have to do with financial success, but the fortune card really does have to, d have to do with, you know, the bigger picture of abundance. So what feels like success to you is going to be different than what feels like success to another. But for you, there's a feeling of success that's at hand. But again, it's counterbalanced with the other side there, the spiritual side, which has something loneliness and breaking kind of infused in the journey. So it's a very deep combination of two activations for the square Pisces path in January. There's power, there's insight to communicate, but there's a lack of planning because of some alignment. And by the way, the dignity card, dignity card here could be speaking to what the norm is. What the norm is. And so if the loneliness, thankfulness, journey, and breaking is coming up with regards to you feel alone in the world because your powerful communications that you want to bring forward are not aligned, not in dignity with the whole, with the masses, that's a navigation journey that you're going to have to take. So for those of you on this square path that want to feel aligned with the masses and reject your planning forward with the powerful writings and expressions that want to come through, that's your choice. But that doesn't have to be your choice, okay? Now, let's go to the circle Pisces path over January. You also received two I Ching hexagrams. The first hexagram is number nine. Number nine is small influences. And it came with changing lines, and it became number five, patience. So number nine, small influences, is about... There is a time that you're traversing now where large initi initiatives, large movements forward are really not timely. It's not the time to make the big moves. But taking care of the small matters at hand will ultimately create the success that you seek and desire. Number five is patience. And it really does talk about you can cast the, the line to the fish, but 
but you really do have to wait. Now, there's a way of utilizing quote unquote waiting so that it's really not waiting. It's a matter of allowing the process of non-action or delayed action, patience and small influences and really utilizing it to learn more, uh, create more um, of your foundations, of your website, of your data, of your courses, of whatever it is that you're wanting to create. But it is about small influences, patience. So for you, the circle path is about being okay with the cycle that is playing out. Now, your evolution, who you are to embody and become this month, optimally, to optimally flow, is number 48, Algea. Algea is the Dakini that represents algae, the algae at the base of all living systems. You know, this is like small single cell organisms that are life force. You know, this is kind of the foundations of life. And so what I get for you is the optimal embodiment is about going to the root. So if it is a period of small influences and patience, it means get to the foundations, really focus on the small, focus on the small. Small is beautiful as E.F. Schumacher said. So focus on the small, get, put your attention on the places that you usually wouldn't look. And of course, Algea is also mud. So get in the mud, get dirty, you know, get into the foundations of that which you eventually want to create for yourself. Now, let's take a look at your reading. So there's a couple very interesting things here. Firstly, I'm using my Siri deck for your circle spread and, of course, the Druid craft as well. So this is a very interesting reading because it really brings up exactly the small influences and the patience. In the center of the reading, we have family, precious, synchronicity, less, and then the, um, the card that came forward, the tarot, the lover's. Now, up at the top of the reading, you can see the lovers in my deck came forward. So you have two lovers coming forward, Pisces. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this means. Now, it could absolutely mean that this is a love relationship. Traditionally, in the, in the true tarot, the lovers card really does talk about choice. It's making a choice an aligned ethical choice, making a choice that's aligned with truth or not, or not, but it's making a choice. And typically the choice has to do with full alignment or non-alignment. So you have two things here though, the lover's card in the tarot at the center, and then lovers of food at the top, which is about doing what you love. It's about loving the nurturance that either you're bringing to the world. Food is nurturance. So you're thinking about love, love, doing what's aligned, and food, nurturance. Now, for some of you, this is going to be talking about a romantic partner. Absolutely. No question about it. If we look, now let's look at the center. Family, precious, synchronicity, less. Now, less has to do with small. There's a small something happening. So for you with family, now for some of you, this could be a husband or a wife, family. Precious synchronicity is happening, but it's happening to a small degree. So there's some small synchronicities occurring that feels rich, precious, special with family. And again, this could be a partner. It could be a spouse, a wife, or a husband. And again, the lover's card is there. So it could be that there's some alignment that's happening that maybe is a choice. Maybe a partner, a wife or a husband, or just a long-term love relationship partner is making a choice. And maybe it is quite aligned. So let's move on to the spiritual sector. Over at the right side, you can see bliss and comfort. Now, this is beautiful because in the spiritual base of you, there is going to be a feeling of happiness, of, of joy, and comfort, ease, peace, that you're going to be able to really settle into over the course of the cycle. At the base, you can see hope, connect, and listen. So hope is talking about optimism. Hope is not just having faith in something, but it's really kind of... Um, 
a rooted optimistic view and you are hopeful specifically with regards to connection making contact or listening hearing what it is you need to hear for this love relationship for the project or whatever new birth wants to happen it does seem to be love relationship related and what i would get for the majority of you is that this less synchronicity or small bits of synchronicity along with the small influences and the patience of the I Ching it's like there is movement forward for you this month but it's not huge it's like there's baby steps forward baby steps forward and again I think for a lot of you it will have to do with that which you love including a partner okay now over at the emotional sector on the left you can see there the new birth card. Now, I cannot tell you how many readings I've done where new birth is coming forward in the reading. 2017 January is bringing new births for many people forward. It's bringing uh, some response from source where indeed new births are going to be ushered into place. Some of them are going to be challenging new births, but they're going to ultimately get you to the place you want to be. Some are going to be more joyful. For you, feeling-wise, emotionally, you're going to be feeling like, wow, there is new birth emerging, and it is comfortable, and it is blissful, and it does have to do with some synchronicities emerging with regards to a lover. There is nurturance that you're thinking about with regards to this lover, and you have a hope that there will be connections that maybe will persist. So Pisces, let's move on to the final tidbits of your reading for the month. Everyone, an exciting announcement. Throughout 2016, I've been called to bring forward a Learn Your Soul Print course, and indeed it's happening. January 2017, we'll uh, have three live stream courses discussing key aspects of your astrology, your archetype encodings, and the Sabian symbology that lives within your soul print, your soul's blueprint, that really are foundational understandings to knowing what our natural alignment is. It is highly delicious. And so for those intrigued, this is a great price, and I encourage you to learn more about it. The web address is thealchemyofholism.com slash soul print course with hyphens uh, between the words. And you can find the link below this video. So for those ready to start 2017 with clarity, with alignment, I highly, highly recommend learning about this course, an excellent price point. The goal for me to provide a course versus working one-on-one -on -one with clients, which is what I do, is so that I can help more people align to their stories. And this story is the natural alignment, the, the natural bliss state. So I look forward to seeing some of you very, very soon. Everyone, before I sign off um, and wish you a very good month ahead, an evolutionary, a rich, and expansive month ahead, I want to remind you that in order to get your personalized alchemy scope, with a spread, with an astrological um, assessment of your solar return, with a discussion of your Sabian symbology, of everything that's activated, including your transits, um, I urge you to make contact. The link is below. And this is a video that you're going to have permanent access to, so you can refer to it throughout the year. But there is about a two-week lead time, so I encourage you, if you'd like to tap into what the whole of 2017 has in store for you, please go ahead and click the link below to place your order right away. Talk to you soon. Bye. You are an embodied reflection of Source. You are thus infinitely empowered, abundant, and a co-creator with your context always. You are an alchemist. Divination works because the web of life is intelligently organized with coordinated and storied agency.